he shouted it, and everybody just oh, you hear? Died yeah. laughing. He's funny. Yeah. yeah. Out of the uh, the groups being watched on the defense, it might be your group that's watched the most this year. Losing Cordrea, losing a baller like Jadar Johnson. This is the fun part of the year when you're trying to mix and match and put pieces together and find those guys to, to replace those veterans. Well, you know, being away from them since uh, spring ball, you know, you're kind of anxious to see you know, who put in the work, who matured. Uh, things of that nature, and then the, the influx of the new kids, you know, just to see, you know, where they fit into the puzzle. You know. With Tanner Muse, he, he showed flashes last year. Isaiah Simmons, where do you see those guys kind of fitting in back there in, the, in that back end? Well, you know, well, that's out of my control now. That's Mickey Cassidy. Mickey, right. That's Mickey. Um, but, you know, you saw flashes, you know, brilliance for those young men, and what you hope expect is that they would take that and run with it. And I'm sure they will. Uh, they are, they're looking towards a situation where they're having kind of expanded more roles and have to play bigger roles, and I think they'll, they'll embrace it and get better. Uh, Ryan Carter probably is going to get that first shot at one of the corner spots. Um, Marcus Edmond, or, or is it, hey, it's it's all open right now? That's the way I play it. You know, Coach Freeman may have a different plan, but for me, you know, you always got to keep that character, dangle that character in front of the players. So if you're not, you know, they'll get complacent. And uh, in my situation, I don't want my players to be complacent. I want them to always be in a situation where they have to prove themselves. Uh, no one, no one you know, earned anything until it's game time. I'm guessing uh, we'll, we'll go through the names. Ryan Carter, Marcus Edmond, uh, Trayvon Mullen, Kayvon Wallace, A.J. Terrell, can he come in and earn some snaps there? They all can. Um, you know, like I said, Ryan and Marcus uh, are probably, like I said, your senior guys who played a lot, a lot of ball. Uh, Trayvon Mullen was mixed in last year and did a hell of a job. Uh, I'm looking for a, a bigger role out of him. Uh, Mark Fields, you know, like you said, we are a very uh, talented group. Now we just got to put it on and put uh, put it out there. Coach, you mentioned A.J. Terrell. Uh, what, what are your expectations for him? What are your early thoughts on him? Well, my expectation is, you know, he's going to be a player. <laughs> That's what I recruited him for, uh, is the fact that he has a great skill set, not to mention he's six two and a half. So, um, like all my players, I look for him to compete, make some things happen, contribute early. Mark Fields. Talk, talk about uh, the safety position, Van Smith, Tanner Muse, and the guys backing those guys up this year. What you got going on there? I can't speak for them. I don't coach the safeties anymore. <laughs> you know, that's out of that's out of, that's my not my jurisdiction anymore. But uh, those guys, like I said, have, have done a, a great job, and you know they're going to have to provide some leadership. And Tanner's going to have to take a bigger role in, in the secondary, and he should he'll he'll do it. You know, like I said, that's the reason why we recruited him. And then you saw flashes of it, you know, in the season, but he had a heck of a, sh a spring, spring practice session. Mark Fields, we've seen the talent that's there, but he's been inconsistent. What does he have to do to, to get on the field and earn those snaps? He's got to be consistent. You know, he's got to be a guy that I can, you know, turn my back and I'm going to be able to trust that he's doing what he's supposed to do. And, uh, and he, he, he's, he's working hard. I'm very excited of everything that I've heard uh, that he's done this summer, and I just look forward to him transpiring onto the field when it's time to play. Has it been difficult to transition from, you know, giving up the safety to Mickey Conn, coaching cornerbacks, or is it able to help you focus on cornerbacks a little bit more? Describe that adjustment to you. Well, you know, for the last 10 years, I've been coaching all of them. Um, it, it was a kind of adjustment because you know, you're used to having all of them back there, and now you only have the, you know, the two. And actually, I like it because, like you said, I can concentrate totally on things as far as corner stuff, and uh, hopefully it'll, it'll transcend to those guys being better technicians. What does it mean having a, a, a guy like Mark Sedman back there and a guy like Ryan Carter who played a lot of football? They, they know what they're doing. They're battle-tested. You know, at the end of the day, you know that they've, been, they've already been thrown in the grease, you know. And that's, that's what you like about those guys. And they're journeymen, they play a lot of ball, and then oh, their leadership qualities, like I said, rub off on the younger guys. Kayvon's one of those guys, we, you know, maybe safety, maybe corner, maybe nickel. Where do you see him fitting in finally and, and settling in at? Right now he's doing a heck of a job over at the boundary corner. You know, because of his length, his physicality, his athleticism, 
it, it allows him to you know, be able to use that over there in the boundary corner, which typically is your bigger, more physical corner, and that's the attributes that he has. So right now he's going to sit in at the, uh, the boundary corner, still be able to play some nickel and some dime, and have the flexibility to go back to safety if you need it. But Trayvon got experience last year, and what does he need to do to take that next step to where you can trust him and, and put him out there? Well, the thing that I like about Trayvon is he knows both sides. You know, a lot of people think, you know, corner is they both play the same position. No, rounding corner is totally different than field corner. Right. And, you know, for a young kid like himself to come in and learn both positions, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it tells a lot about his, his football IQ. What he needs to do is, you know, change his body and get a lot stronger. Because a lot of those guys in high school, you know, they're usually the big guy on campus. So the physicality part, you know, usually sometimes has to, has to come in and adjust. And he's actually done it, and like I said, I'm looking for big things on it. What about Isaiah Simmons? How much of an impact can he have? Well, he should have a big impact. He's one of the fastest guys. And he's only, I think he's like the second fastest guy on the team. Uh, extremely athletic. You know, Mickey Conn, I have to tell you about more, you know, when he, when he sees him, because now he, you know, Mickey has the safety, but I see a, a, a big role for him. He should be big for us. Here are some other faster guys that you've seen on the team that maybe we haven't got to see show their speed yet. Uh, I mean, Mark Field is probably one of the fastest, if not the fastest kid on the team. But like I said, Isaiah, Tanner Muse was a mother. I mean, he's extremely explosive. And I think you saw that in the Syracuse game when he uh, caught that uh, deflection pass and ran in for session. A lot of people were like, whoa, that guy, that guy can run. That was something that he did in high school. You mentioned Coach Khan uh, taking the safeties. How, how well has that worked? How, how much easier does that make your job being able to break up the positions that way? Well, now I don't have to deal with the corner. You know, I don't have, to, I don't have you know, all those personalities in the room. You know, it's, before it was like 20 kids in one room. You know, so now it's, you know, it's 10. You know, so it's a little easier. You know, and like I said, it allows me to focus more on the corner technique things of, of, of my guys. So hopefully it will transcend to being more technical the same. Is, is Lee Anthony Williams the guy that can get into the mix this year in your opinion? He definitely can. He's a kid that has a, a huge football IQ. Played on one of the top level of football programs in the state of Georgia. He's played against uh, great talent, you know, and so he's a young man that should, you know, if all things work out, he should be in the mix too, you know. So success of the program the last couple of years um, on the recruiting trail, how, how much, how significant has that impact been uh, just in, in the awareness and the interest in Clemson and when you go out on the recruiting trail? Well, the, the fact that we are, you know, we won the national championship, we played the national championship once, twice in a row, uh, a national ranked program as far as uh, student athlete GPAs, it, it gives you a lot to sell when you go out to these parents. And, you know, the brand now, I think, is bigger than ever. You know, you can go to the West Coast and people realize the Paul. Heck, I have people in Canada that tweet me about a no-fly zone shirt. You know, so, you know, it, it's definitely been great to, to watch it happen. And it's made recruiting a little easier, but it also put it, uh, it's made it harder because now we have to be that much more uh, scrutinizing the players that we're bringing into our program to make sure they fit the culture and, and also that the kid can survive here. You know, this country is not just uh, a regular place. You know, it takes a certain student athlete to come here and, and be successful.